So welcome everyone, as I said before. Um, once more, this is Ginger uh, Media TV. And this evening, all we want to do is to pay respect to a brother um, in the person of um, Dr. Melafia Obidaya. This broadcast is nothing else than um, an expression of our collective shock over the sudden death of her brother, Melafia Obidaya. You know, um, without going into his bio, which we could do um, later, no, no. No, no. what we uh, want to do here is to, you know, you know, express our feelings. Many of us are still in shock. And, you know, if things were normal, many of us now would have been in his home. There are people that we know and we have spoken to that are in his home. And they, you know, but be the way the world has moved on since COVID. Um, yes, there are people present there, but many of us also have decided uh, to be with his family and to console ourselves, individuals, and as a collective. And in doing that, to put this together and to speak to ourselves. Now, many of us really um, came to know Obidaya very well and closely since the lockdown, you know, because that offered many people the opportunity to begin to um, interface. Obviously, many have known him um, more than a couple of decades. Some people in this Zoom this evening also are his bosom friends, people who grew up with him. I we pray and we hope that they will have the opportunity to also say one or two things. Now, personally here and um, and on behalf of Njenje Media TV and Njenje Media Group, we say we have lost a very um, articulate, eloquent, and straight to the point shooter, someone who loved his people so much and someone who spoke truth to power, someone who you know, understood when to be diplomatic and someone who um, was um, a caring individual Many of us here also in many forums know the conversations that really had gone um, underground, so to say, and the conversation we have actually had, um, what was in the pipeline. And obviously when this came, it came as a shock. And before I came online, I had, you know, looked at, one, you know, once when the news broke of his death, you know, many people started, you know, everyone obviously have their own insinuations, but one thing stood out and I must read this out. If we all recall sometime in September, 2020, now it's more or less a flashback Obidaya Melafia asked us all collectively, he said, and I read and I quote him, please pray for me. I have reasons to believe that my life is in danger and that some powerful political forces want to silence me forever for speaking truth, for speaking on behalf of the holy martyrs, of thousands of innocent children, women, elderly, youths, 
that have been killed in our beloved country. There are other quotes like this that when one looks at it, it breaks one's heart. As a person, I'm not speaking to say that I know the reason and the cause of death. I'm only here speaking as someone who is grieving to know that a friend has been lost and to think of my, you know, think how best could I express this shock? And in expressing this shock, many of us here are as shocked as I am. Therefore, I will be giving us, you know, maximum of five minutes for those who want to speak. Um, you know, uh, I will call out some names. Um, obviously, I'll give them as much time as they, uh, you know, uh, as they want to have. Then afterwards, um, if you raise up your hand to speak, we'll give you a maximum of two minutes. Now, I want to start by uh, calling on um, uh, Paul Yusuf. I don't know if um, if he is willing. Oh, is Paul Yusuf gone? Okay, yeah, no, he's still here. Yes. Oh, if you don't mind, um, if you don't mind, you can unmute yourself. <coughs> Obviously, um, Paul, you're welcome to this um, conversation. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a tough one. I did have a conversation with you a couple of, hours ago when you know when the news broke and still under the shock i don't know if you do have one or two things to say paul uh there is a at the moment one is uh like you have rightly said we are in a state of incredulity because in the journey we are in, someone, I mean, we have lost a commandant in the battle of our, of our war, in the field of battle. And to wake up this morning and have this message come to us, there's a lot of things playing in our minds, a lot of questions that we need to be asking, but who is going to ask who? But like you rightly said, we have come here this evening to mourn. A burden shared is a burden halved. So traditionally, we would all have rushed to this, uh, the, the family, but then looking at it all, we are his family. Mm -hmm. So all of us were hurting in one way or the other. So now I don't really know my, the, re, the meaning of coherence, my understanding is when your head and your heart are working together, but at the moment, my heart doesn't seem to care what my head is thinking and my head doesn't seem to care what my heart is feeling. I'm completely disorientated by this. And uh, I haven't known Obadiah for very long as a person. I've heard, I've known of his name and his family and uh, because I come from a missionary background as well. And the Southern Kaduna, the missionary families are interwoven, whether you've met the person physically or not. We have a way of knowing each other and what is going on with one another. But in 2017, when we met in the House of Lords here in London, that was the first time I actually came face to face with Obadiah and we sat down trying to project to the world our struggle from Southern Kaduna. And uh, when he spoke, he, he was so emotional that you could see the passion. I have hardly seen anybody in our struggle who was more passionate than his presentation that day. And from that time onwards, we have kept in touch. I have followed all his activities to this point. And for those who have had conversations with me regarding our struggle, you would have heard me mention his name a lot of times as someone that we can build around. 
ideologically, someone who has gone all out for our cause, an exemplary character to our struggle. If you like, if we are A and C, so talk of him like a Steve Biko, yeah, who has gone all out. And I, like you just read out there, he said his life is in danger. And when I heard about his death, the fact, the first thing that came to my mind, Obadiah has been in hiding for a while. How come he's in, uh, he's, he's in a national hospital in Abuja? How did he get there? Who took him to national hospital in Abuja? I don't know the circumstances. We are here, I'm 5,000 or 6,000 miles away from home. I cannot say for sure. And it's not easy to talk to anybody at home because everybody is just as uh, uh, shocked as I am. So I would just want to thank everybody who has taken the time to come. Let us share the pain because it's so much to bear losing somebody like Obadiah at this crucial time of our struggle. Uh, I don't know if pain even begins to describe the feelings that uh, most of us are feeling, but let us just uh, put our heads together for the sake of sharing this pain that we have and uh, see if we can just raise his <clears throat> sensible questions. We have to respect him and, his, and the struggle that we are in. And uh, there are a lot of things that may come to our minds, but let us just try to be, to be grown up in our morning. I may have things to say later on, but uh, for now, let me just leave it there. Thank you very much, um, Paul. Thank you very much for that, um, you know, uh, from the hearts talk. Like you said, everyone who had about his death that's been close to him, that understood that for a while um, he has been in hiding. And when we say in hiding, literally running away, um, he was not in Plateau, neither was he in Kaduna. Uh, many of us who uh, have had one-on-one -on -one conversation with him would know where, where uh, he was. Now, like you said, uh, waking up and knowing that he died and that um, he was in Abuja, raised a lot of questions. I don't know. And this is one thing we haven't found answers to or logical explanation to. But hopefully, we may uh, come to um, full realization or information as regards to what actually happened. But um, I would be yielding my mic now to um, the Amazon of the Niger Delta, Ankyo Briggs, to say one or two things. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I, for today at least, I'm finding it difficult to refer to um, Obadiah in the past tense. Even the posts I have made um, does not refer to him so far in the in the past tense and. Um, when great men like um, Obadiah leave what they are doing on earth um, as we see it and go to the Lord, we look for reasons and explanations and rightly so, um, because we feel um, we are empty, we are naked. Um, like yesterday, I sent him a message at exactly um, 3.57 on, uh, on my WhatsApp. And I was saying, emphasizing the, the, the need for the unity across the South and the Middle Belt and that I had not heard from him in a, in a while. A, a while is like a week because Obadiah and I speak uh, quite regularly as uh, so most people that uh, are close to him do, you know. And so for me, uh, even not talking to him for one week at a stretch is a very long time and for him too. So this morning, it was unbelievable for me. I mean, my, my, my feet weakened 
when somebody called, uh, sent a message and said, oh, please confirm, is uh, Obadiah dead? And I'm going, dead, where, how? And I was calling everybody. But at the end of the day, we're gathered here because we're all in that same shock, extent of shock that, um, that I felt. Now, um, losing somebody like Obadiah in the struggle that the ethnic nationalities of Nigeria are in. I don't, I mean, I'm not going back on that because we're all ethnic nationalities. Obadiah, I met him in 2016. And what brought us together on a platform was this struggle, his passion for his people, the killings in the, in Southern Kaduna, in, um, in the Middle Belt was what uh, brought us together and the, the type of government we find ourselves in uh, from 2015. And um, to actually see that somebody like Obadiah ha is taken out by death, um, whether by sickness or um, death is death, whether it's sickness or you're shot or you drown or whatever the case may be. Obadiah is dead. And we have to definitely, as people who are trying to find personal solutions and um, uh, ethnic solutions and regional solutions for justice and equity and liberty in, in Nigeria. Um, we must make sure that what Obadiah believed in, which is that the killings must stop and that it is not fair and that things must change. Um, he believed that it is possible for Nigeria to stay together. He believed that like most people do. I don't think anybody here or even before now, the desire was that People just wake up without a reason and start saying, let's split Nigeria. It's like being in a good marriage and just saying, you wake up and you say you don't want a marriage. No, nobody does that. So we've reached this level today where if it is not for this struggle, I don't know. I think that Obadiah will still be, will still be alive, but we don't know how he's dead. His family eventually hopefully will be able to, uh, to tell us, and it may help us in the process of um, uh, working with the pain and getting, uh, getting to accept his loss. But I, I want to believe that um, out of this gathering to, to honor Obadiah, we're also seeking for a way to move forward. And that way of moving forward, in my little opinion, will be um, to hold on to the things that he believed in, that we also believe with him um, for, for the case of justice and equity in Nigeria for Christians. He was very passionate about the killings of Christians in, um, in Nigeria, yes. It's more in Southern Kaduna, in Benue, now in Jos and uh, up in the north. It's more there. It has not really come down to, to us this much in Southern Nigeria, particularly maybe in my region, uh, the Niger Delta region, and, uh, and maybe in my, uh, in my brother's uh, region in the, in the Southeast and all that. But definitely the, the killing of Christians, and, and that is why he was in the House of Lords. And even when he spoke recently uh, in the Senate, he spoke recently, I think two, three weeks ago uh, uh, by Zoom in the American Senate. You know, so the issue is definitely the killing of Christians, definitely the takeover of ancestral land, um, the injustice that the rest of us are suffering in Nigeria. Um, by a handful of people, literally, by a people that truthfully, if we have the census and we are identified by ethnic nationality, these people, I don't think they're up to 20 million. I do not think so. 
And I think the time has really come. Um, uh, Obadiah definitely wanted to stay alive and why not? I want to stay alive, wanted to stay alive. But he called out and he cried out and he said, look, I believe I'm going to be killed. Obadiah is not the first person in Nigeria that has said he believes he's going to be killed and has ended up being killed under one or dying under one circumstances or another. I think we should be able activists and people um, who generally are looking for solution. Um, we really must make a decision, a collective decision um, that we should be on the alert and the world should be on the alert. Just because you and I are saying there should be changes in Nigeria does not give anybody the right um, for, for anyone to find themselves uh, no more in, in this world or for somebody like Obadiah who genuinely was afraid that he's going to be killed. So at the end of the day, whether malaria killed him or a cough killed him, the reality is that he said he was going to be killed. And now a year exactly, literally, exactly a year after, the man is dead. So we need to appeal to, uh, to people like our brother Paul um, to, uh, to, to help us to impress on, on the people of South, I mean, Middle Belt, um, to first of all, carry our, definitely our collective sympathy and hurt across to the people of the Middle Belt. They're not alone, they are not alone. And, um, and also to, uh, to say that it would be nice for the right questions to be asked. But maybe um, those, like Paul said, there are certain things we will definitely hold back on. But the feeling of pain that we feel is not something that I think I will hold back on. And um, the, um, the desire to, uh, to speak up and say that, no, we don't want to hold a gathering like this. Let Obadiah be the last. I mean, it's okay if somebody um, is ill and they genuinely die, but let's not find ourselves in a, any one of us in a situation where we're afraid to speak. And when we speak, we now are afraid that because of what we have said, that we are now in some kind of danger. Um, I think I, I want to leave it at that, that it is very critical that this, uh, what has happened to our brother, um, if it is natural, it will come out in the end. If it is unnatural, um, it won't hide forever either. I mean, you can kill the, uh, the truth carrier, but you cannot kill the truth. So the person who is speaking the truth can, can drop dead, but that truth that person is speaking, it's not going to die. I don't know, I, I leave it at that. I am just so pained. Thank you very much, um, sister. It's um, obviously, we are all in the same way. I mean, it's slightly, so to say, unbelievable to think that just a couple of, I would say weeks now that we all woke up and we lost another gem in this struggle in the person of Yinka Odumakin. A couple of weeks later, here we have again, almost in the same manner. The only difference is that many people who uh, we are close to Yinka at least knew that he was ill, but this is more sudden or rather sudden than um, ever. Again, we can only say may the soul of our late brother, which I found very difficult to use that late, you know, as you said, address him in passing. May his soul rest in perfect peace. And I would um, be calling on Wang uh, Kuang Wenzigwe uh, to make his um, contribution. Wenzigwe, uh, please, you have um, up to three minutes to uh, do and make your intervention. Okay. You can unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I was uh, 
really greeted with shock this morning when I had it because um, I think three weeks ago we spoke about uh, an impending conference. In fact, pray not just conference, um, a prayer meeting where we pray to God and then discuss how we go on because as we agreed, we've been talking too much, talk, 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 and uh, there was need for us to put our talks into action. And um, I really know, you know, he told me to put up some proposal, which I did and gave to him. I've been communicating, I just, just a shock. But then it gives us, uh, you see, we are talking of strategy in warfare. You're not only talking about gun, shooting gun, armored cars, and other things. It encompasses a lot of attacks. And it's a warning to our Christian leaders in this country. It's a warning to all activists that no, they are not safe anywhere. Because I am in exile. I know what I've experienced in the hands of these people. And that was when I was in Togo and Ghana, they said they want to take me to hospital. I said, I was not going to go to hospital there. Because I remember when I got accident, you have seen people who just walk, important men who just drove. Oh, I'm having fever. Let me just go for medical checkup. They just drive themselves to the hospital and they're offered bed and they never return back. They never return back. And I'm not talking, but I'm talking as a historian that a medical doctor has the license to not just cure, but also to kill. I remember when I had accident with my car and they were trying to take me to Federal Medical Center. I said, I'm very close. I said, you can't take me. I was still alive. They said, I said you can't force me going to that hospital. I'm, I'm alive. Take me to a private hospital. Take me to Dr. Onwechi's hospital. Somebody I knew. And they said, okay, since he's talking, take him to that. Because I know. If people who are targeting you know that you are there, they will just move in. And it's a question of putting something inside your drip, wanting in your eye, and they tell you, you are gone. And that is all, internal bleeding. I was in hospital detention in, 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 in Batu Redi. Baturi District in Eastern Cameroon, when the same federal government were pursuing me, I was there when they injected me substances while I was sleeping. Injected me. And if not because of the way God created me, that is it's not easy for someone like me to die from poison. It should have been a different thing altogether. And even where I am now, it's a question of even buying people to push, you know, to poison themselves and not. So they have many ways of operating. And that was why in my comment, you see, we've had like the Atai Gala, the late Atai Gala, uh, he, you know, the way he passed, he, you know, he, you know, he passed on. I told them, Atai Gala, even myself as Udogo of Ibu, I don't just go to hospital. I don't just go to hospital. Because there's a level you come you, you are in Nigeria. You don't just rush to hospital. At, at most, you get a private, you know, a private person to treat you. And that explains why a lot of them prefer going overseas. Not that they can't receive the treatment. They prefer going abroad, where they will be treated in a, in a political environment. But you, as a prominent person, going to hospital in Nigeria is, is as... as as dangerous as going to the war front yourself, because that is where, under legal umbrella, you are illegally expired. So, Obadiah's death is a warning to a lot of us. All the hospitals are already infiltrated. If you listen to, to Iswa Adobo, the, the National Public Secretary of Middle Belt Forum today, even before he said it, I've already stated it on my Facebook. Why did this man? go to Abuja hospital. And he stated it. All the experiences he had from, even you know, from uh, uh, Central Bank, of, um, uh, yes, Central Bank of Nigeria hospital, the way he was treated, when he went to Gwagwalada, the way he was treated, even the doctor who finally expired him, 
was not supposed to be on duty. Was not supposed to be on duty. And when the wives, even when foreign consultants came to look into the case, they blocked them. The doctor who was sent to carry the, 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 the human job refused the foreign consultants to intervene. Even when they said he was, you know, he was dead, those foreign consultants said, let us see if you can resuscitate him. They refused. So it was a case of murder, official murder. So when we are talking about, if we are talking about strategy, it's not about Fulani gunmen, Fulani men, or whatever, or bandits killing you. Killing now is what is now computerized, is digitalized. So his death is a warning. But I know to every death in the Lord, there must always be benefit. As we have seen it, Christ died so that we'll be saved. And many prophets, even people who brought Christianity to us, a lot of them suffered in order to give us victory. Victory, any person who expecting that victory is a tea party, you better go and sleep. This is just a warning. This is just a warning to the next step of the battle, which we must all be cautious of. I'm also conscious of our movements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Moise Goda, um, for those uh, cogent points made. Now, I would be calling on the next person, um, Dr. Chidi. Doctor, can you kindly unmute yourself and um, make an inter intervention? Uh, thank you very much, Mazis. Okay, it's always a pleasure to come to your to your show, and um, especially I want to thank you for honoring our brother, our fellow comrade, Badaya. See, call me a conspiracy theorist all you want to, but this is a clear case of murder. I don't care what they want to attribute. Death to. I mean, anybody, everybody is eventually going to die. But isn't it kind of very coincident? The coincidence is too much, right? That on the 14th, on the 14th of September, the Sahara reporters will publish a story. And in this story, Melafia was saying that I the title of the story is I hope this will be the last time that DSS will be inviting me. Melafia says after third invitation by DSS. And this is that Melafia honored the invitation on Monday after an interview where he said a seventh governor in Northern Nigeria was the commander of Boko Haram terror group, according to information he received from some former insurgents. I will want everybody to go back and read that Sahara Reporter's publication of September 14th. This, sorry, sorry, this is uh, 2020. Uh, I mixed things up a little bit. But in that publication, I need you to read through it and see what he already believed was going to happen to him. Somewhere in that publication, he said, I hope, he says uh, that he is willing to, to die. Let me, let me, he said, speaking to journalists and supporters, he said, thank you all for being there. Many have said the worst things and nobody invited them. I hope this will be the last time I'll be, I'll be invited by DSL. All I'm saying is that the killings must stop. And it says, um, said that he was willing to perish for speaking the truth according to his interview, according, according, adding that his interview does not warrant continuous interrogation. So my people, when you see somebody in the position of uh, Obadiah, Melafia, who is very outspoken, and he's already telling you that, look, even if this leads to my death, I'm willing to perish, and he finally perishes. It's just, it's just very simple. So uh, without uh, taking much of your time, my condolence to his family and uh, his supporters, but this is just an eye opener like the last speaker said, we don't understand 
a lot of us don't even understand what is going on. A lot of us don't get it at all that we are already in this, in a warfare. We have been infiltrated. Uh, security has been compromised. We are, we are in their need for an, an awakening. And if this is um, a rude awakening, I hope it spurs people to action to be very, very, um, it spurs people to action to be more vigilant in what they do and what they, how they respond to issues around them, especially security. Open your eyes very, very well. The things you take for granted, these guys can, can, can they are all over the place right now. I don't want to start mentioning names, but um, um, it's so painful. But uh, I just, I just, um, I just wish his family uh, the fortitude to be able to bear this loss. And thank you so much, Mazdez, for honoring uh, our comrade in this manner. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chidi. Thank you for being part of uh, the conversation this evening. And uh, once more, um, again, uh, I think we cannot say this is enough of his death. You know, it's um, really, really devastating. So having said that, um, I would be yielding my mic again to uh, Meg Green. Uh, you have uh, two minutes, please. Meg Green. Yes. Well, thank you all. And thank you to the organizers. Like everyone, I'm really shocked. I'm really shocked. But I believe that once I heard it, just like Wanko said, I knew it was poison. What I can say right now is that the Kabul the, 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 the Kabul has Nigeria won it once. The only solution right now, folks, the only solution right now is for the leaders and the people of the Middle Belt down south, east, west to pull their heads together and present a defense to this thing here. The disease right now in Nigeria is greed. Right now, someone just said here that the, that the doctor who expired him was not supposed to be on duty. That's greed. I have no doubt he would not have op opted to go to the hospital. Though I was not there or I'm not there, I would believe that he was incoherent or he could not make a decision. And it would be his people, his people that are close to him, his so-called friends that would initiate him being taken to the hospital. That's good. We have governors and leaders of the middle bit of the Southeast West that have bowed to the Kabul, can't speak, can't talk, can't do anything. Right now, most of the people fighting here, like Obadiah, obviously, are standing alone. We all stand alone. They're going to take us out one after the other. The solution is to pull together, folks. We've seen it. Someone said here that, they've been in, that we've been infiltrated. That's correct. I'll cut it very short. Maybe Mwanko can, can speak on this later on. But look at Medina. Medina was not. Medina was a Christian Jewish city. How did it become a Muslim one? Find out. Look at in, Intifada between Israel and Palestine. 
Look at Sokoto becoming uh, Gobir is becoming Sokoto. <coughs> we don't do something. Take us out one after the other. Yes, Ms. Briggs mission is not yet in the south yet. But they can't jump to the south. You have to keep capturing area. When you capture Kaduna, Middle Belt, you're heading down south, west, east, all of those things. We all wait. They'll take Kaduna, they'll take Middle Belt. And when they hit to that, when they head down to the east and to the west and to the south, and they keep taking people out, at the end, no one will raise their voice when others have been taken out. So it's left for the leaders or the people that haven't, don't have this level of killing to say, we must not allow them to get through Kaduna and to get to the bird. Because when they get down to you, there'll be nobody to talk about you, to talk for you, to speak for you, to cry for you, to work for you. So to avoid it going down there, all of us need to pull together and stop it in Karuna. It's already there in Karuna and Middle Bay. It needs to stop there, not going further. Because they will take us out one after the other. And then they will turn on themselves. Look at Afghanistan. Look at Afghanistan. Taliban against ISIS. ISIS against ISIS-K. All of them. They don't, each of the factions of these people are the best. And so when they get rid of the entire Nigeria, they will turn on themselves as to who should run Nigeria. What do we want? <laughs> Question. And that's what Obadaya did not want. Can you go and see my khaki? If we are going to honor Obadaya and carry on this thing, we must pull together and stop this nonsense and stop this madness. So. If we, if we hold down greed, they will not be able to buy anybody. They will not be able to buy anybody. That's the solution, folks. That's the solution. Thank you. So thank you very much once more for that intervention. I think uh, Professor uh, Femi Olufemila, I don't know if you are ready. If not, I will take the next person. Let me know when you're ready, Professor. And um, I want to um, bring on stage uh, Mazi H.T. Malakoye. Uh, Mazi Okoye, please, your two minutes. Go ahead. Unmute yourself. Thank you, Mazi. Um, it is really a very um, sad, sad day for um, every lover of truth and freedom. Uh, Mr. Obidaya was a great man. We were together last week, Sunday, the same forum, discussing, you know, way forward. And um, the sad news today was, um, was a shock. At the time, um, he never displayed any sort of ill health. Um, he was his usual self, he was actually um, making haste to um, attend some other meetings that he had that last Sunday. And um, and um, to hear today that um, he's just passed away like that is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is unbelievable. However, I just want to pay tribute to a great man because he's one of, the, one of the few people left in Nigeria that can, that, you know, personally I can listen to. He's the only, you know, one of the few maybe two or three people in, in the whole of Nigeria that I can listen to, that can speak the truth, that has the, the courage, you know, that has, you know, the, the metal to be oh. true to power, you know, and um, for him out of the picture now is, um, is a great loss. 
to, to every lover of truth because he stood for, for justice, stood for what is right, and he spoke the truth. And, um, you know, it's sad that he has to pay this um, ultimate sacrifice for, for the truth. But, you know, we that um, listen to him and, you know, you know, articulate his truth and, and um, see where he's going, we'll, we'll not let his death be in vain. We must all, you know, stand firm and, and carry on and, and, and make sure that the truth that he spoke about, that he articulated, doesn't die with him. Because he's, um, he's a truly, a truly great man. And he will remember it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi um, Okoya. You know, again, once you know, when you said this, it really brings back the um, the pain somehow. If you recall, I think you and even uh, Doctor Wang Kongwezi was there about two Saturdays ago. We are still in these conversation and that, that was streamed live on this platform and this conversation was a way forward of building these middle middle belt and the southern alliance and that you know obviously once um we stopped streaming many of you who were in that uh, zoom meeting uh, will recall some of the um revelations if I if I put it that way, and they were made after you know the cameras stopped rolling. Now and to say that f his death doesn't strike a blow to some of those conversations would be that someone is lying. Yeah. I will get to the next person to speak, but before I do, no, um, hold on. No. I'll, sorry, um, you're supposed to be muted. Sorry. I'll get the next person to speak, but before I do, Wang um, Kongwe Zigo, I think you made a statement that, um, which I think was towards the death of the Atta of Igala. But when um, Megram was speaking, I thought he made that reference and attributed it to um, as to what the dismays of um, uh, Dr. Obil Melafe Obidaya. So please can you um, clarify that statement please so that we do not uh, have the public misinformed. Okay. Dr. Yeah. Ago, may you have on mute now. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, if you know the, if you actually understand the history of a Gala nation and how over time they try to teach them into the, into the caliphate and how they've been resisting, you understand what happened to the last attack a Gala. Because I wept the way I'm weeping today for Obadiah. I wept for him. His father was exiled and move from office. His father, the later, uh, yeah, the later, after, because he opposed Sadana. They told him to remove his cap. He said he can. He was not going to remove his cap. And when they forced it, bees, swarm of bees, you know, finish everybody there. And then they took him from there. They removed him. And then the next person who took over, <coughs> the last one who took over, was a lecturer at. Uh, Zaria, he was a Christian, but Sadona gave him an, you know, a condition that for you to be at, I have to become a Muslim. And that was how he became a Muslim. And when he died, the Gala kingdom decided to bring back the son of the other uh, uh, man, who was a Christian. Who was a Christian. Dr. And Dr. then, Dr. yes. Because of his, uh, uh, yeah, because they've been using the free, caliphate, have been using a, a amper where they have concentration of immigrants from Canaan there. 
they be using Ampa to, to, you know, to disorganize the Gala Kingdom, opposing the attack. And then these are the people who join with the uh, Ebira people, where they have the governor now, where the governor now, you know, emerges, where the governor emerges now. Try to oppose them. So the point is that when he also came, he tried to bring back certain lands, certain communities that were wrongly put under the Ebira, who were actually under attack in Igala. Because the attack was even of, you know, was even in control in pre colonial time up to Nupe, you know, side, and of course, you know, up to Igbo land. So he said, so he brought it back. So, yeah, the government didn't want it. So, in the process, I'm not telling you, because there was already conflict, and as out of a gala, he was permanent chairman of the Kogi State Traditional Council, just as you have in other states, which the Ebola people have been opposed to, and somehow. Dr. Wenzel, you know, my, somehow my, he had the same. No, let me conclude. Project. Yes, let me conclude. No, no, somehow no, no, no. You're not, he had the you're same. Not, sorry, you're not addressing the point. That's that's yeah. why I'm trying to you know point you directly. You're not addressing the point. The what was point the point? And the question. Okay, the the point that I made is, yes, in your last intervention, which uh, Megrain, I believe, misinterpreted, was when you said that uh, the attack of Igala. Uh, went to the hospital and eventually a doctor who was not supposed to be on duty no. saw that eventually he didn't leave to see today. But McGrain is attributing that to say that you meant that uh, uh, Obidiah was taken to a hospital and the doctor who was not supposed to be in the hospital today kind of, you know, um, saw to his death. So I say I do not want us to misinform the public, so okay. I want you to reaffirm that you were making reference to the attack of Igala's death, not to Melafe Obidaya. Is that correct? Oh, he, he, yeah, the statement I made in respect of the foreign consultants was to Obadaya, not to the attack of Igala. I only used Atta of Igala as a reference point because it was the same way Atta of Igala was taken to Abuja Hospital. To federal, you know, yeah, to Abuja Hospital. And he never came back. And that was what I say, you know, that was what I was actually saying. That because of the conflict in Kogi State then, and he was taken to the hospital, he never came back. And I was trying, you know, so to attribute saying, the same okay, now, so scenario so help with us the case of uh, Obadiah. Not so that. What you're saying, okay, now what we are understanding is what you're saying is that. Obidaya, as of yesterday and today, that there yes. were some foreign doctors who yes. said they needed to yes. see him, consultants, yes. Yes. and they were refused access in seeing him. That's correct. Okay. It's, it's fine. I mean, that is the only clarification because... That is correct. Even okay. when he was pronounced dead, and they tried to see if they can resuscitate him, you know, death is not normally automatic. Somebody could be resuscitated. There were occasions where even people woke up from mortuary. There were even some people who were already pronounced dead, still came back to life. So even when the foreign consultants said, look, look want to see if you can restore, the, the, the doctor, the strange doctor they brought said no. Okay. And that, um, Thank you very yes. much. I mean, yes. that's that's the clarification I needed from you. Yes, Thank yes. you very much once more, Dr. Wenzigwe. Yes. That um, has uh, helped, uh, uh, you know, tremendously. So I would get the next person. I think I had uh, Professor Bami here. Professor Bami, are you still here? If you are, oh, okay. Professor is not uh, locked on with audio. I think uh, he probably has a challenge. So Professor Bami, if you still want to speak, please kindly log back with your audio on, then we can uh, bring you on. So, but let me quickly get uh, Erelu Tungwasa. Can you kindly unmute yourself and um, miss Max's intervention? Go ahead, Leru. Thank you very much indeed. Um, first of all, condolence to all the loved ones of um, the late Dr. Malafia. I am a stateswoman from England. I'm a politician. I came across Dr. Malafia recently. I'm sorry, also, is that why we are not, sorry, is that why we are not seeing your face? You don't need to see my face. You need to hear my voice. 
I, I hope you don't mind. Go ahead. Permit, permit me to go on. Go ahead. I am an Orthodox Yoruba traditionalist, which means I don't believe in Christianity. This gentleman took time out to develop an insight into my belief system. And we exchange information, more cherished privileged. And I, I know this guy as a man of substance. He has actually um, impacted on many lives. I have a program online. He was on my program on Saturday morning, the 11th of September, during which I interviewed somebody who is the mighty Allah ambassador. And I recall him saying, please pray for me. Please pray for me. I'm in hiding. And he remarked he hoped he would be alive. This is a man I, I have learned a lot from. A Christian, I don't believe in Christianity, but he had respect, regard for my view. He even spoke Yoruba to me. He wanted to know about why my beliefs are the way they are. Uh, a, a man uh, of great humility. But that takes me to 1999 when I led on behalf of the British government, a delegation to Kaduna during the Kaduna 1999 crisis. And uh, by the way, I'm a conservative. And we wanted to find out why all these churches were burnt. At that point in time, the religious crisis was denied. We were told ethnic crisis and a project set up, uh, funded by the clergy team in what I would call Southern Kaduna. And um, my interaction with Dr. Obadiah facilitated uh, quality um, understanding of the main issue facing the country called Nigeria, religion, ethnicity, probably lower priority. I want to conclude by saying, I saw him as a man who wanted peace. I didn't see him and I don't still feel him as a man who wants to continue fighting uh, after his death. I would hope in his memory, some kind of an attempt to build bridges would be made in his memory. May he rest in perfect peace. I am honorary alderman, Erelulola Ajori, the conservative UK, Erelu Tuashe of Odiremo. Thank you very much um, for those uh, words. I would uh, be allowing uh, Zango Gamble to speak now and in doing that i think um you know while um a melafia or late doctor was a nationalist and a humanist also a christian someone who believed in inequality because that's what drove him you know someone posted something in twitter today that really got me thinking he said i'm all well, basically paraphrasing that nigerians that our mumus uh, or rather our mumunes is uh, like a factory fitted uh, air condition that when the same man came to become the president of nigeria no one very few people looked towards him as a sound economist but uh, sadly, once we got into the vehicle that we are in, and everybody's here once more crying. Again, think about it deeper. 
we think to ourselves, what do we really want? Zango Gambo, if you're ready, I yield my mic to you. Can you kindly unmute Zango if you're there? If you're not, um, I would be, uh, you know, ask, kindly ask Abby to unmute, please. Abby, if you may, kindly unmute yourself. Abby, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm here. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Marcy. Wow, today is a great loss. The one I never envisaged. Yeah, I'm I am at loss. Hello. 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 Sorry, we, we've gone past you. We can meet you back on Zango. Um, once Abimbola finishes, then you can come back. Abimbola, go ahead. Okay. Then. Yeah, I think um, my regret is I never met the man over there. My intention was when I go to Nigeria, I will have the opportunity to meet him personally. Unfortunately, that never be. It's a regret. Anyway, for the short time I know Badaya is a tireless man. A man that could hold everybody on a forum from seven o'clock to one o'clock in the morning. And that was the last time I heard of him. Next I saw this morning was Marcy is it okay saying Badaya is no more. It's a great loss to everybody. But I, won't, I have one message for everybody, especially those people in our struggle. If you have not taken your fascination for COVID, please be watchful. Know where you go to take those medication because the killers might still be in the hiding for all of us. Thank you very much. And may Obadaya rest in perfect peace. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Bimbola. I mean, that's, um, again, is an advice. Um, you know, people, viewers watching, we have um, thousands of people watching this stream now across uh, various uh, social media handles. So the advice is there in the open for one to do with however they wish to. Uh, Zango Gambo, please. Yes, um, good evening, everybody. Sorry, Zango, can you uh, try and turn your camera around, boy? Yes, go ahead now, Zango. Hello, good, good evening, everybody. Go ahead, we can hear you. Yes, uh, let me start by uh sending my condolence message to the family immediate family of uh, dr obadia and also to the entire good people of nigeria uh dr obadia is one of our uh, one of uh, our proud uh, personality he is an advocate of every minority group in Nigeria. He has been fighting a good cause for the downtrodden, the less privileged, the oppressed in the Nigerian nation. We are very, very saddened over his sudden demise. Uh, there are a lot of things going on in Nigeria in that we need somebody to stand in the gap to always speak truth speak truth to government and to our leaders over there was such a personality that normally advocates the yearning and the aspiration of so many um, minority group in Nigerian nation. Uh, some of us of course are of the opinion that query uh, be set up to investigate 
the 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 to investigate the cause of his uh, death. All that we are hearing on the social media and other platform is that he was briefly sick. And of course he was taken to the national hospital here in Abuja. So we are of the opinion that uh, the medical experts should get involved, get themselves involved so that we should have um, an inquiry as per the cause of his death that will equally save us a lot more to come in future because there are so many things happening in this country that uh, our eyes cannot uh, comprehend so in summary he was a great man he was an ad advocate of so many masses and so many people uh, were in love with him so uh, i wish uh, I wish the family well, and of course, may his soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much, um, um, Zango, for that uh, intervention. Um, I think um, Adeja Jemba, you still there? If you're there, can you kindly unmute? Yeah, um, yeah, good morning from my side of the world. Um, I was very shocked this morning when I received that text from you that uh, we're having a kind of town hall for uh, the date of uh, but I went online immediately to search. I'm like, what is going on? And um, all I could see was um, uh, where they put it is a cousin as stating that he was briefly sick and had malaria. So I have a lot of questions. I'm sorry, I called in late. But I overhear somebody mentioning COVID. So my mind is going to, is it possible? Could it be possibly COVID related? So I agree with all the speakers, the few speakers that I've heard so far that is calling for um, an autopsy into what happened to him. Because I mean, it, 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 it is very um, shocking. And um, I, I'm trying to be politically correct. All the people that oppose this government, somehow they found themselves dead. The current government of Nigeria, somehow they end up dying. So we don't know what is going on. We need more, we need answers to this question. We have more questions than answers. I mean, he, he was, he looked like a healthy man. COVID, uh, COVID don't really kill that fast, you know? So we don't know. How come it just, it, it, it's really, um, my, my mind hasn't wrapped around it. So I don't know what we're planning to do with this um, town hall meeting we're doing, but I really want us to get something out of it because we need to really demand that the government, you know, do something, give us an autopsy. How come he just died? He just got sick and then he died. And people have been sick with COVID and they survived it. So I don't know. So um, I'm, uh, my condolences to the family. Uh, my heart is broken though. I don't know him, but I, I, I've read him speaking truth to power and all the things he, he, he how he exposed this uh, government and all the corruption that is going on in the government with this current government. So I I I, I pray that God will um, grant him um, rest, that his soul will rest in peace, the repose of his soul, and uh, that God will console his family. I hear somebody mentioning that he, I don't know who said he was afraid for his life. I don't know if it was Dr. Badaya. So if at any point in time he mentioned that he was afraid for his life, that means there's some foul play somewhere. So um, I don't want this to just be a, a town hall meeting. I want us to artic articulate the statement and send it out there. People that oppose this government should not end up dying. That is not the way democracy is supposed to be. You don't just, you know, people, they can't just be killing everybody for speaking up against their government or for, for speaking up against the rot in the government. So that's all I want to say. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I feel so sad because this came as a shock to me. So that's it for now. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Deja Jamba. Thank you. Now, I think, um, you know, statements from the statement will be issued from the Southern and Middle Belt Forum uh, in the next couple of, well, rather, 
before we started, before we came on, Lauren, obviously the statement I think uh, was about hitting um, the um, you know the airwave, and um, many members of the Southern and Middle Belt Alliance um, group are also here uh, live. Some watching online, some also in this room. Obviously, one of the demands uh, in that. Um, press statement is the to demand for an independent investigation into his death. Uh, as um, Dr. Wanko Mwezigwe uh, pointed out, obviously the point that he raised would be, I believe, um, part of that demand. If true, that there were foreign or international consultants who uh, whom were basically there and they were not granted access to see him or even when presumably that he was no more and they wanted to um, see if there is still more help to be rendered and if they were um, refused access to him, then the question that must bother every right-thinking Nigerian or, you know, anyone who has any atom of humanity in him will be to find out why. And in asking and demanding for that why, we hope to have a close-up as to what actually happened. You know, Adawa said here that um, you know, it, it, or rather, I've been uh, barrister Bimbola alluded to by telling people to go take COVID vaccination. You know, reading in between the line, anyone would understand that probably his own version of what he had could be alluding to COVID. Hence, him advising people to go to go take COVID uh, vaccination if they haven't. But again without foreclosing anything. One thing that is being demanded from here and after this you know, meeting will be to demand for full investigation because it is only when a genuine and full investigation is done can people begin to get answers to the questions that they are demanding. Having said that, um, is Professor Femi Olufemilade ready? Professor, if you're there, uh, if you quickly want to make your intervention. Professor, are you there? Do you want to unmute um, in more two minutes, Max, if you wish to? Okay, Prof, go ahead now. You've been unmuted. Yeah, since you've been calling me, I've tried my best to unmute, but the thing keep telling me, uh, host will not allow you to unmute, and I message you privately too. Well, oh, all I would like to say is that um, I feel this is the wrong time to lose uh, Dr. Obadiah Melafia, but then we cannot query God. I believe God is the giver of life, and uh, I believe also that no matter what fellow mortals might do to take your life. If God still has something for you to do, he will be there to serve as the shield. And if he allows the enemies to do their worst, perhaps he allows it to save you some greater troubles. Head or tail, I want to console myself with the fact that Dr. Melafia lived a meaningful life, a life that is quite enviable, a life that is exemplary. And he identified himself with a noble call at a time when this country needs noble men to stand in the gap for the downtrodden, running into millions, 
that are being misruled and whose fortunes are being mismanaged recklessly. Uh, despite the fact that he occupies a privileged position in this country as a former deputy governor of the CBN, as a technocrat of international standing, he decided to identify with the downtrodden. He, defied, he decided to stand on a risky uh, pedestal when he could have joined the, those who are frolicking with our commonwealth. Uh, to simply enjoy himself. So for that reason, he, I will say he has passed on gloriously. And we will always have sweet memories of him. And what more can we do than to ensure that we commit ourselves the more to the ideals he strove for before the ultimate end came and for which he was being haunted. And what are those ideals? The ideals of freedom, self-determination, the ideals that man in humanity to man, endemic injustice should be completely extirpated from the Nigerian landscape. Those are the ideals. And I want us to redouble our efforts as those who hold this country by the jugular are uh, continuing uh, business as usual. As far as they are concerned now, the greatest task before this country is how to transfer power from one section of the looting class to another. They are not a ruling class, they are a looting class. And that is the permutations that drives them. It, it is the permutation that engages their energy in their nocturnal meetings, in their uh, meetings in Dubai, and what have you. Uh, we should see how we can try to change the narrative and give our people options so that at the end of the dark tunnel, they can see light. Thank you very much. Thank you That's very my much. Contribution. Thank you very much, Prof. Thanks uh, for that intervention. Uh, quickly, uh, may I also have um, Kashmir uh, Biak? Kashmir, please. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, go yeah. yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. All right, okay. Um, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the time. Um, I like what um, Ms. Brooks said, that you can kill the messenger of the truth, but you cannot kill the truth. I also taking note of the fact that, you know, what the professor have just said, in life sometimes, um, maybe it's not how long you live, but how much you contributed. I mean, as Christian, we hold the belief that, you know, there will be death before heaven. And the Christ that will worship also died before he went to heaven. Um, I've known Obadia, uh, Dr. Obadia since childhood. I'm from the same part of Nigeria with him. I've been in England for close to 40 years now. We I remember when we were walking just towards Southern Kaduna, about some time when we were talking about the happening there when it was a lecturer at religion college before he became international. He's a man who dedicated himself to life. But I think my point here would be, I would like us to practicalize things. I would like us to say, for example, is it possible for all the Middle Belt and the Southern Forum to come up with a, with a proposition that says that, look, we should not have an election in 2023 until we actually come up with, say, a new constitution or a new way of moving forward. Because the greatest lies I've ever been told in that country is that the present politicians are there to serve us. They're not there to serve us. I can tell anybody, I'm sure everybody knows that. It's basically about the common world. And you have a bunch of about a thousand or two thousand people who have cornered the common world and who have left this thing. The Southern Kaduna part of 
the Southern Carolina aspect, which Dr. Badia was fighting for, was that anytime there are crises in Southern Carolina, the state government and the federal government will address that criminal as a criminal crisis. Come on, for goodness sake. I'm sitting down in my village. You come all the way from somewhere. You kill me, and you're telling me we have, it's a criminal clash. Where did I see us in Nepal? This has actually, this, this has been press released by the federal government, press released by the state government. There's something fundamentally wrong. So what I want us to take from here, if I may suggest, is for us to come up with real practical ideas. Example, should we have a new constitution before the new election so that the present people who be elected will now go into those constitution? Or should we say, oh no, elect us in, we'll change the constitution and do the right thing. We've had that before. So I think we need to take a stand here and insist. I've said this to Dr. Lavia, both privately and both in forum, that if you guys are writing the constitution, they need to make sure that you know we'll come up with something that needs to be done before this 223, because the present government promised us restructuring before, and then 1915, no, sorry, 2015, and then in 2019, so that didn't happen. 2019 again, and I came up with some kind of idea that they'll do restructuring, and then we don't have anything again. And I'm pretty sure by 2023, they'll not come up with another thing again for us to do. So I think we need to start looking at practice, you know, pick another idea and say, look, this is what we want, because we are the majority. That is, when I say we, I mean those that have been trampled on, I mean those that whose you know, life has been affected by the inaction or the, of, of the activity of the present ruling class. So really, we need to look at things and put them into practice. And we can talk from here to the kingdom come. Nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. That will be my take. I am, to say I'm sad is an understatement. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, um, honestly. I think people, um, obviously, the whole essence of this is to, for us as a people, um, everyone who... Uh, have met uh, Melafia, someone or people who have had contact with him, and those whom his message may have, you know, had one impact or the other, um, you know, to come together, to grieve together. Obviously, many here, some haven't met him, some have uh, had the privilege of speaking with him in multiple occasions without having met him, meeting him face to face. But the bottom line is here is that we can all see from the testimonies of everyone uh, here, it points to one thing. You know, it points to that which he believes in, which he has a uh, while alive uh, by virtue of standing on those ideals uh, that have been appealing to many of us, hence leaving whatever we are doing on a Sunday that many uh, you know, will be busy. Uh, honestly, it's also a call for reflection of our own lives because imagine now anything happens, how many people could actually leave what they are doing and to come online because you know, we are no more there. He, you know, really, like the last speaker said, it's really, uh, really sad, really sad to um, know that he's no more here with us. So we will be um, shortly rounding up as we have another uh, meeting in the next couple of uh, minutes. However, before we do, um, I don't know if we have any, you know, uh, pastor, reverend, uh, however that is that is called. Um, I don't know if we have any here that could uh, probably pray for us uh, uh, to round up. But before we do, I will take um, three more people. I would allow Emmanuel Mark, who has been resident his hand for a while, to speak. After which, I would allow um, Paul and uh, Ankyo to speak. So can you quickly, um, uh, Emmanuel, can you um, raise your, uh, can you unmute yourself? And please uh, think now, because we're rounding up sadly, you have a woman to, to make your intervention. Emmanuel, are you there? Emmanuel Mark? 
Yeah, good evening all. Uh, hello? We can hear can you, you hear me? Okay, yes. Uh, really, it's I'm beyond shocked that Obadiah Melafia just died like that. Sincerely. And what I would want to say is this. Obadiah was a voice for the Middle Belt. A oh, sorry, please. Obadiah was a voice of effective leadership for the Middle Belt and represented the Middle Belt effectively on the national stage. With his death, it is like an elimination in my mind of a very, very important person in the shit. I want to appeal that we really need to look at the issues that Obadiah spoke to. And like someone said, not allow this to just happen and go like that. Let's use this death as a catalyst for effective movement of the Middle Belt and the Southern regions. Like somebody, somebody was about ensuring that there's no election in 2023, a new constitution, it's more than all of that. We need to, as a people, say no to this situation of madness and lawlessness. The security situation is beyond reason. And my solution to this is that in every state, the chief of police should be an indigenous. And in every state, the head of the military should be an indigenous. Because then an indigenous will be able to take charge of security and ensure that these killings that are going on in Nigeria end and there is more security. As for this death, there must be autopsy done. We cannot accept that Obaya just died. He was, there was no news of his being sick other than that he's dead. It's unbelievable. Thank you all. So thank you very much, Emmanuel, there. And um, <clears throat> I think at this stage, um, you know, Ankyo, I will bring you back in before I bring in Paul, because I want to wrap up with Paul. Um, Ankyo, if you may, if you may unmute and, um, you, you know, basically round up with your, with your thoughts, having listened to everyone here. Then equally, if we do have a pass, like I said, um, that might take um, a minute or two to pray for the soul of the departed. That will be all right. Uh, first of all, OK, um, again, good evening, everyone. I responded to something that was directed um, at me in the chat uh, in the chat box. I don't know if. Um, anyone else has seen it. And I think it is from someone called Justice. And uh, if I am wrong, I apologize because it was directly after one of his comments that he uh, there was a response to my comment. Mazi, please try and uh, check it and correct. Now, look, let us all be grown-ups and adults here. I'm not a little girl. I'm 69 years old. And therefore, anyone that will address me and refer to me as being naive after I have given over two decades of my life to justice and equity and liberty in Nigeria, coming from the Niger Delta. You see, that is why we are where we are today. You have to give people what is due them. Why are we gathered here today? We're gathered here today because of a great man called Obadiah. Half of the people here have not met Obadiah, but they're here because they respect him, because they respect what he stands for, because he's a humble man and he's a truthful man. So for one person that I don't know, that doesn't know me, to address me and say to me that I am naive, because somebody here said that we should not leave this meeting without actually coming to a position. And almost everybody, thank you, you brought the lady up. And almost everybody here has agreed that we have to have answers to what has happened to Obadiah. We're dealing with, with people that ordinarily are doing what you and I will never do in Nigeria. But that is what is happening. And for people who 
are not vocal, are not taking risks like Obadiah is taking, like Mazi is taking, like I am taking. To now refer to me as being naive because I said that we should demand from the government, who, who should we demand from, from the devil or from somebody who does not believe in, uh, uh, in, in any cause? We should demand from the government. They will not give us answers, but we will be on record as demanded. We have to be wise. If you're not wise, if you don't have wisdom, that's your business. But I have wisdom. And I've been in this thing for over 20 years. And I know how it is done. Obadiah knows how it is done. That is why everybody is paying today that Obadiah is dead. We should demand from this reckless government what happened to Obadiah. How is it that he was recommended to three hospitals in Abuja? And how is it that he is dead within two days? Somebody must give us an answer. Who will we ask? Satan? We will ask the government. And if they don't give us an answer, let us be on record. That is wisdom. And let us involve the world. They won't do anything, but we will be on record. Obadiah is a well-known gentleman, a brilliant man. He went to Oxford. He has friends in the UK that are high up in the British uh, uh, government. He knows people in America. I said about a week or two ago, he spoke to, um, uh, to, uh, uh, to a Senate committee and he was criticized by the so-called presidency. And then two weeks later, this man is dead. And then somebody is here telling me that I'm naive for making this, uh, 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 this demand. Mazi, I don't know who this person is, but you should uh, cut people who are insultive to people. I do not deserve this type of uh, addressing from somebody that I don't know. And I don't care who that person is. I don't know how many degrees you think you have. I don't, I don't care who you are. I have not insulted you. And I'm reacting purely because of what you have said to me. All of us, I am very pained by Obadiah's death. I'm, he, he's my friend. I'm very close to Obadiah. And so for somebody now to, to, to insult me here this evening, because I am grieving for my friend, I, I, I totally reject it. And I demand an apology, Mazi. Um, I must say, um, obviously, I cannot be everywhere at the same time. I must, in, now that you've said it, that while you're speaking, I've uh, taken to the comment section. Um, obviously, I was looking at comments online and at the same time in, the, in this room. So I'm just seeing it now. And I must, um, on behalf of Ginger Media, um, being the organizer of this um, event, I would say that uh, we are deeply sorry. And I would also encourage um, Comrade Justice justice who made that comment to please also apologize you know again um i tell us um irrespective of where you stand on the nigerian matter even if you want nigeria to break tonight you want nigeria to be restructured you do want the status quo to remain unchanged no matter where you stand we are all victims of Nigeria, as they're saying in Pigeon English. Now, Nigeria, they do all of us so. And in doing that, uh, in knowing this, you know, we, if we know that we are all victims, I beg us and I keep saying this to us, we could convey our messages without being insulting to one another because it helps no argument. It makes, you know, because once that begins to happen, you can see that you block the channel of your argument. Now, and it creates a, a very uh, dangerous um, uh, impression about the individual, which might take a while to be wiped off. So why engage in that? We could always, I keep saying it, many of you who follow me online, I say we can always argue. I mean, I love it. 
that we argue. I love it that we exchange ideas. We could always do these things in a much civil way without, you know, taking our frustrations, which we are all victims. We don't take your frustration on your fellow victim because that's what it is. We are all victims of the whole um, uh, mess that we find ourselves. Um, my sister, once more, I deeply, deeply apologize um, for such comment on your person. So, um, again, I do not know. I did ask a question before. I would now lower everybody's hand. You know, those of you who are still raising their hand in the meeting as we are now closing. I would allow only um, Paul Yusuf to speak. But before, um, you know, before he does, I would want to yeah, know must. if we do have... Sorry. Before he does, uh, I would, um, you know, I would want to. <laughs> Sorry, I just lowered all hands, and everyone will be everyone um, will be muted back. So one thing I just want us to the only person I want to unmute is if you are a pastor that we would want you to pray please if not um please do not raise your hand at this moment i beg you but if you're a pastor in our midst um you know pastor reverend okay i think we have one now so i believe that christopher i believe that you are a pastor if you're not please lower your hand but if you are uh, let me ask you to unmute and confirm that before I go to Yusuf. Christopher, are am, you a pastor? I am the Archbishop of Enugu, Methodist Church, Nigeria. Uh, okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, be on standby. I want, um, uh, I want um, Yusuf to uh, make his last intervention. Then uh, I would call upon you to pray for him before we all depart. So Yusuf, please, if you are there, can you quickly, um, Paul, can you quickly unmute yourself, please? All right, thank you so very Paul, much. Uh, now, bringing you back here is, you know, it's, it's someone close to you as well, risen and, you know, representing the people of Middle Belt. You've listened to what everyone has said about the man Obidiah. I want to give you, on behalf of the Middle Belt people, to now speak to the world. Thank you very much, Paul Yusuf. Thank you, uh, Mazi, JK, Jinji TV. Um, you consulted with me before this, this meeting started, and uh, the, 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 the idea we had is a forum where we can all come together and mourn the loss of a great friend, a brother, comrade, colleague to a lot of people. Um, I want to thank everybody who has uh, taken time to be with us today. The pain shared is pain hard. I'm very uh, disturbed uh, the way uh, things turned out a few minutes ago, but you have uh, nicely taken care of that. And, and please, uh, and Kyo, please uh, take heart about that. We are here, we have bigger things to worry about than that at the moment. Now, I just want to quickly, since this thing happened this morning, I have been trying to get uh, a clearer background as to the events that took place. And uh, I have now been in touch with the Middle Belt Forum and uh, they have been in touch with the family. And I just want to read out some statement that they just sent out here. Um, <clears throat> Arising from various inquiries from Nigeria over the circumstances of his death, the forum wishes to take uh, to state as follows: that Dr. Malafia arrived at Abuja last Sunday, September 12, 2021, from Akure, and was received at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport by his wife. On arrival at home, the wife noticed he was not in the best of health conditions and seemed to be suffering from malaria. After three days of treatment without signs of improvement, 
he went to the CBN hospital on Friday, September 17th, 2021, where he was shabbily treated, shabbily treated. It took the intervention of a senior medic who immediately placed him on oxygen and admitted him. Dr. Malafia was later given the option of choosing three hospitals, Guagualada Hospital, National Hospital, and EHA clinics. The wife opted for the third option. On arrival at the EHA clinic, the wife was subjected to yet another moment of anxiety as it took direct order from the top management of the hospital to accept him. After a few hours of treatment, the EHA clinic told the wife that it was expedient to transfer the former CBN deputy governor, uh, governor to Guagolada as the clinic was not fully equipped to handle the case. The wife opposed the decision and insisted that she was opposed to the idea of taking her husband to Guagolada. Uh, Guagolada. My lafayette's wife also, I mean, only succumbed when the consultant assured her that nothing bad will happen to her husband. Yesterday, Saturday, September 18, 2021, Dr. Malafia was transferred to Guagolada on arrival. The name of the doctor that was billed to attend to Dr. Malafia was not on duty, even when an attempt was made by foreign health consultants to save the situation the doctor on duty got angry and said he was not obliged to listen to any foreign consultants that had been brought in brought into the matter with the sole purpose of ensuring nothing goes wrong wife of the former cbn deputy governor was asked to pay the sum of uh, 500 i mean 600000 as deposit even if even when it was a referral case with recurring with a current medical bill to be settled by the CBN. At a point, Dr. Malafia complained over his breathing problems and pleaded with the doctors to place him in a ventilator. The doctors flatly refused. Even after the doctors de declared Dr. Malafia dead, foreign consultants who were brought into the matter through Dr. Malafia's son that is living abroad had directed a family member who is a medical professional with the wife of the CBN deputy governor to, cut, to mount pressure on the chest of Dr. Malafia for resuscitation and therefore replace him on a life support. The doctors in Guagalada refused all, entre all entreaties by the family members of Dr. Malafia to follow the advice of the foreign consultants insisting that they have already pronounced him dead even when the wife could feel pulse of her husband mm. the doctor flatly declared there was nothing they could do since they had already pronounced him dead now i'm reading this so that we don't leave here with uh, speculative questions on our mind this was with people who have been with the family who have been talking with the wife and this comes from directly from my life here's family so please, um, I don't really know, but a lot of statements that have been made here are very apt. We are in a struggle and we cannot continue to be falling one by one like this. Every indigenous nationality in Nigeria, this is to me like a final call. We cannot take anything for granted and we have to stand up. We have to try and get our country. Let Obadiah's death be a turning point in our struggle where we'll make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, geez, I'm sorry, I'm short of words. I am, I don't know what else to say. I will use the opportunity to invite the Archbishop in our midst to 
um, pray for the soul of the diseased and the family. Archbishop, you have the floor. Let us all pray. Before I will say these prayers, I'd like to sing this song. Till we meet again, till we meet again, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet again, till we meet again, Obediah, God be with you till we meet again. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, our dear Heavenly Father, you are the author of life. You are the one who gave Obediah to us as a son, a brother, an uncle, a leader of people. And today, Lord, we mourn his loss. We thank you because in you there is no death. The word says that those who believe in your son, Jesus, though they die, they shall live again. And so we believe that at your feet, at the feet of Jesus, but there still lives. We pray ancient of days that you grant his soul eternal repose. And so, Lord, we pray also for the family, for the wife, the children. We pray for the people of Satan Kaduna. We pray for the middle belt. We pray for Christians everywhere who mourn the loss of this great Christian and great leader of the people. And Lord, you grant us the fortitude to bear the loss as your Holy Spirit by comfort us in this time of grief. I want to pray ancient of days at, at this time that you raise for your children, for your church, and for the people, men and women, who will rise up and stand for the truth, men who will stand for the legacies that Obadiah has left behind. Grant, O oh God, that as we mourn him, the greatest we will do for him will be to live out his legacies and to continue the struggle to ensure that this nation is free from all forms of oppression and all forms of Deaths occasioned by evil men. So, Father, thank you for everyone who has been on this platform. Morning, your servant. Grant to all of us grace as we continue to honor you in our lives and continue to stand for truth and stand for all that will make for free humanity. May your name be glorified as you bless all of us. Even tonight, as we sleep, grant us rest. But most of Lord, grant peace to your children everywhere in this nation. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much once more for that uh, prayers. On this note, people, I will say to all of you who have joined us to... Um, kind of trying to find solace, rather trying to find answers to what happened with our brother, late Dr. Melafira Obidaya, whom I have to say once more, may his soul rest in peace. As the bishop has said, the struggle obviously continues on that note from here in Ginger media tv i will say once more thank you for being part of this i am your host mazi is okay and i say good night to all of us